Jo was again in India in February 1901 on her way to Japan. From where she returned to Calcutta on 6 January 1902. She had brought with him the well-known Japanese artist Kakuzo Okakura, whom Jo admired greatly and wanted him to meet Vivekananda, which he did when they stayed at the Belur Mart. Okakura, wanting to visit the places associated with the Buddha, Vivekananda accompanied him and Joe on their visit to both Gaya and Varanasi, even though his own health was not at all good. Earlier, he had taken his mother, Bhuvaneshwari Devi, on a pilgrimage to various places in Bihar, which she had asked him to do. Although it had exhausted him, he had derived immense satisfaction from it, for it had made his mother so very happy. In April 1902, Jo spent two hours with her friend, alone, in his room at the Mutt. She recalled later that while Sister Nivedita was distributing prizes for some athletics, I was standing in Swamiji's bedroom at the Mutt, at the window, watching. And he said to me, I shall never see 40. I, knowing he was 39, said to him, But Swami, Buddha did not do his great work until between 40 and 80. But he said, The shadow of a big tree will not let the smaller tree grow up. I must make room. Afterwards, I went again to the Himalayas. I did not see Swami again. Joe later left for London to attend the coronation of King Edward. In her own words, as I said, I never was a disciple, only a friend. But I remember in my last letter to him in April 1902, as I was leaving India, I was never to see him again, I distinctly remember writing in this goodbye letter the one sentence I swim or sink with you. I read that over three times and said do I mean it? And I did. And it went and he received it, though I never had an answer. Nivedita spent half a day on 2 July with Vivekananda. The event that took place between them was described by her in her letter of 28 August 1902 to her beloved friends Nell and Eric Hammond. Although he himself was fasting on that particular day, which was an Ekadashi, he served Nivedita her meal. He insisted on serving me. But this is not for reputation to others. Fanning me while I ate, washing my hands for me, and so on. I said, Swami, I hate you to do this. I should do it for you. Then he laughed and said in his daring way that Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. It was on the tip of my tongue to say, but then, that was the last time. Thank heavens, I did not. 
that act of Vivekananda was his last tribute to this great English woman who he had always known to be him, of whom he had said a few days earlier, she is pure as purity, loving as love itself. And soon after meeting her in London in 1895, he had said to her, you have in you the making of a world mover. On 4 July 1902, at nine in the night, Swami Vivekananda passed away. I said to Swami Shardananda, seeing a certain cloth covering the bed top, is this going to be burnt? It is the last thing I ever saw him wear. Swami Sharadhanan offered it to me, but I would not take it. Only I said, if I could only cut a corner of the border off, but I had neither knife nor scissors, and the seemliness of the act would have been doubtful. So I did nothing. At six o'clock, as if I were twitched by the sleeve, I looked down and there, safe out of all the burning and blackness, there blew to my feet the very two or three inches I had desired out of the border of the cloth. On 10 July, she was invited by Swami Brahmananda to Bailur Mat and was given two choices. Either she stops talking of nationalism or she leaves the order. Nivedita chose her freedom and left the Ramakrishna order. But with Vivekananda established in her heart even more firmly than perhaps ever before. To this should be added, unlike most novels and great films, na iti, not finito, not finito. This story has to continue. 